Hey, this is your local note. My name is Mike Stringer, joined by RJ McKay. We are the website dedicated to Philadelphia area bands and artists. We are here to promote them so that you can discover great music from the area. And there's many ways you can do that. We are streaming 24-7, and it's only music to the Philadelphia area. And the way you can get to that is, of course, our front page, but as well as iPhone and Android apps. They are free right now. You can search for YLN at their stores. And, of course, we have these weekly featured podcasts. And this week, we have The Way Home, their Philadelphia area rock band. And we'll begin with their first track off their album on so thin a line it's called boundary blurring they are the way home and this is your local note.com i'm down and done the evening has just begun I'm sick to death of the sun south of where i run for the hills i've known all the pills so dumb kills me oh tie me down oh the way home that is boundaries blurring this is your local note.com guys first welcome thanks for coming in hey, thanks, thanks, for having us. thanks for having us no problem let's go down the line introduce yourselves and the role you play in the band uh i'm james i'm the uh guitarist singer songwriter uh troublemaker town drunk <laughs> <laughs> i'm henry i'm the keyboardist also backing vocals we all do backing vocals um and acoustically i also play some accordion I'm I'm Dan. I play the bass. 
I also drive the van a lot. Nice. <laughs> Make sure we get to where we're going on time. It's very important. It is very important. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm Nick. I play the drums, and I am also the uh, guy who plays the drums. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Nick also does uh, all our uh, all our graphic design. So the album was designed by Nick. Pretty much any posters or stickers or really any art in general that you're going to see uh, about the band uh, was probably made by Nick. Excellent. All right. So we're all here. Uh, the Way Home. Let's get start simple. Why the name The Way Home for you guys? Um, well, The Way Home, uh, we used to be a band called The Sobriquettes. And um, because it's a French word, some people had a hard time saying it and spelling it. And it sort of was an impetus to change the, the name of the band. Um, we also had a lineup change. And so we really wanted to to give the band a new identity um, to go along with the, the new lineup. So um, we had this big list of names that had like ridiculous names and it had, excuse me, normal names. And um, so I had added The Way Home to the list, which was um, an idea that I had that came from a, guy, a club owner who uh, we played at this club in New Jersey and he saw us play. And after the, after the show, he was like, um, wow, you guys, I, I had no idea that, you know, you were going to play music like that. Like you all walked in and you looked like you were on your way home, you know, about to have a drink or something. And then you got up on stage and just rocked the place. So, um, that's where the way home came from. Cool story. Very nice. And so how did you guys, uh, all meet? When was the beginning of the way home? James and myself have known each other since we were, since we were wee lads, since we were high school. Um, and he and I have been in bands together since we were like 15, 16 years old, you know, started out making, cassette tapes in basements and sell them to your friends till you had enough money to make more cassette tapes right. in your basement <laughs> and sell those to your friends. Um, James and I moved to Philadelphia like oh, th- 2003, 2004. He moved first um, and then I came and we realized that if we were in the same city that we were finally going to like make, I guess, a, a real band, like with a capital R. We had had bands and this was going to be the real one. Uh, I think we're on like what the Fourth or fifth, the fourth or that, fifth yeah. incarnation of what that would be, um, and you've moved on from cassettes since. Yes, yes. Although if if you uh, if if you follow the music scene now, cassettes are like becoming a real boutique comeback item right, right now. Um, but yeah, so we uh, we started the Sober Cats. It was kind of just the two of us, uh, and then we found uh, this guy named Josh who played upright bass and sang with us, and then we found Nick, our drummer, through. A mutual through a mutual friend who's also a drummer. Actually, the we found him through the guy who mixed our first album. Um, Scott French. Scott French is his name. Uh, <laughs> He's very talented. He is. He is very... You have to cough because there's a cough button. <laughs> no, it's not a suggestion. It's actually just there for convenience. Oh, okay. uh, yes. <laughs> um, and then we kind of... Uh, with Josh, Josh left the Sobercats and we played... Uh, um, did we ever play just the three of us, or did we? Uh, not on purpose. Not on purpose. <laughs> All right. Um, and we looked for Henry. We we looked for Henry. No, <laughs> we looked for we looked for a keyboard player. We looked for a guy named Henry. We looked for a guy exactly. named Henry. That's uh, what the ad said. It didn't say yeah. keyboard player. Looking must be, for Henry. Must be <laughs> named Henry. <laughs> it just said just looking for Henry. And looking then, for you Henry. Know, come <laughs> what may. We found Henry. Keys. Yeah, we found Henry because we wanted a uh, a real keyboard player. Um, and we found Henry. That was like it's like almost a year ago today uh, exactly, yeah. that we played our first gig as the way home. Uh, it was at, it was at hard it was at the uh, Hard Rock Cafe in uh, in Philadelphia. Wow, excellent. All right, and and you have out now on so thin a line, which is the album that we you heard the first song from. That first song, boundary blurring. Uh, tell us a little bit about that song. Who wrote it? What is it about? Um, I wrote it. And it's about things you shouldn't discuss on a family show. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe do your best. Try, more. you know, some metaphor um, in there, innuendo, if you will. <laughs> it's about girls. Yeah, there you go. It's it's a, it's a it's about the ladies, or you know, maybe just one at a time. Um, <laughs> okay. But uh, yeah, there yeah, we go. There yeah. We go. Okay, this Done. is where we hit the cough button. Done. Right. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got that. Let's talk about your influences, guys. Um, as you got gr- a couple hours? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take 
talk about bands for days. Okay. <laughs> Growing up, what uh, James? What got you into music? What what band? Um, well, uh, I was actually born to a family of musicians. Where uh, okay, so it's family business. It's uh, to the degree that I, I was singing before I could talk. Okay. Um, my parents just were in in choirs and and choruses and other type of things. And my sister is a professional oboe player. Uh, my other sister is a is a musician. So just it was. It wasn't really even a choice, just sort of what I do. Just, it's just what everyone did. Um, yeah, I mean, I came to rock music. Uh, I really had only ever heard the Beatles till I was about 10. My parents were not rock and roll people. Right. Um, so it wasn't until I sort of I hit 10, I realized I was still making contemporary pop music. I hit 12, I realized some of it was really bad. Um, I probably found BR when I was about 13, which yeah. is an indie rock radio station in, in western New York where Dan and I grew up. Okay. Um, and realized that not only could music be really essentially important but also be made by like dudes you might meet in the street where, where, not, where in western new york it's uh it's a uh, wber is based out of uh out of rochester new york i i i worked at 98 pxy in uh, rochester new york 98 oh, pxy wow. was yes. like probably the first pop music station i ever remember <laughs> that was here. that was my 10 through 12 years was it really <laughs> <laughs> although i mean thanks in, for making me feel <laughs> <laughs> i mean in, in the early 90s though i mean they were playing you know like pearl jam and stp right. and stuff like right. that and that's right. you know i don't at least for people james my and, and nick's age too you really can't well i was up there because i went to college i went yeah. to geneseo Okay, oh, sure. Cool. So, yeah, it's yes. a great town. It was uh, a lot of yeah. fun. And when I went there, it was a top five partying school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it still is. It still is. is. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so I'm familiar with that area. Yeah. I guess people like myself, James, and Nick's age, like the early 90s are just mm -hmm. such a huge shaping thing. Whether you, whether you want to admit it or not, like it's it's there. Like I heard on the radio on the way over here, um, um, now that we've found love, right? By um, is it Heavy the D and the Boys? Boys? Heavy D and the Boys. Heavy D and the Boys. Oh, that yeah. sounds. Yeah. And all it made me think of was this, my seventh grade dance when <laughs> I, I saw my ex girlfriend for the first time with another dude. Oh. And, so anyway. and what did you do with it? <laughs> uh, now I, that you'd found it, I, I let it go, man. I, I think you can write a terrible. song about that. I think. I think, I think someone did. did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, but. <laughs> But James, James, do you have any more influence? Influence. So, so there's a lot of classical background in your family. Yeah. How do they look at you now that you're you're into rock? I mean, are you the black sheep of the family? Yes and no. <laughs> um, you're a family of black sheep, actually. Yeah, that's actually <laughs> really how it works. Kind of. uh, <laughs> we're all sort of uh, skewing off our own little directions okay. here and there. Um, but it's interesting. My my mother. Uh, we've been playing her rock and roll now for 15, 20 years and playing her whatever stuff we're listening mm -hmm. to that she might like. Um, and she called me a week or two ago to tell me that she had gone to see uh, an orchestra concert that was an orchestral queen hmm. with electric guitars and an orchestra. And she's okay. like, I really, really enjoyed it. And I would never have thought to do that if it hadn't been for you. I'm like, well, I, okay. There you go. It's a start. Queen Very is nice. orchestral queen. We can we can work with that. Yeah, why not? It's a step in the right direction. Henry? Um. I'm coming from a fairly diverse musical background, starting, you know, when I was a little kid, I actually hated music okay. for a good while. All right. And um, I think it's kind of funny looking back because, um, you know, I mean, I'm a music teacher now, and I remember, uh, you know, looking at some of my students, I also, you know, see like some of the frustrations that I had sure. sitting there, and I was like, oh, well, anything that the students throw my way, this is just karma, because I was such a frustrating student, and I don't know if the guys know this, but I was such a frustrating student that... I'd been fired by several teachers. <laughs> like they just gave up and said, you, "You're not going to do music." Well, you're a freshman cure player too. Don't, don't yeah, <laughs> this is this is true. Um, and yeah, and then during uh, you know middle school or so, I started really getting into music. I did you know competitions and that um, you know made music a little bit more. What, real. what were you listening to then during that? Time? Um, it was actually all, all classical. I was pretty much a, you know I guess I would have been the um, one of the sheep in James's family in that case. <laughs> and so a heavy a classical background. Classical background, and then. Um, then I made the slight movement into um, symphonic metal. <laughs> Symph okay. And Weezer at the same time. It was, <laughs> <laughs> and then college came around and got you know, uh, swept up by a lot of things. And that's actually where I got introduced to playing a bunch of jazz I've, and Latin funk and that kind of stuff. Uh, after graduating college, I uh, went on to tour with a Motown band of all things. And oh, nice. My folks thought that that was pretty funny. I was like, well, we never thought then when you were – not practicing for piano lessons, he'd be playing music okay. that we we grew up to, <laughs> and 
Yeah, and then kind of stumbled my way into you know answering the ad that these guys have put out for a keyboard player, and here I am now. Very nice. It I... was a careful trap. <laughs> careful <laughs> trap. All right, Dan. Admiral Akbar. Oh, gosh. I will keep this as brief as humanly possible. Yeah, the, yeah these two guys, to. James and Dan, on the tour, uh, when we're on the road, it's just a nonstop rock education session for Nick and myself. We sit in the back, okay, guys, this is this, this is that. And then they give us the Wikipedia plus okay. <laughs> amount of history. We, we we do hold music encyclopedias inside our head. They have 11 volumes. <laughs> <laughs> so far. So far. Um, like James, I grew up in, in Rochester, New York, uh, heavily influenced by the music on... Uh, on WBER out of Rochester, mm -hmm. which was not just new music. You know, it wasn't just like, you know, Grunge and Nirvana and stuff like that. They, right. It's the first time I ever heard the Ramones. It's the first right. time I ever heard the Clash um, or like the Pretenders or... The Smiths. Uh, the Smiths. Definitely um, being close to Canada too, we got turned on to a lot of Canadian bands. One of my favorite bands of all time uh, is a Canadian band uh, called the Tragically Hip. Okay. Uh, who are massive in Canada. They're, they're like the Pearl Jam of Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they come here to Philadelphia and they'll play, you know, a 600 person theater, which is actually kind of awesome to me as a fan because I'm used to seeing them with like 15,000 people. Right, right. And they'll play like, you know, the Trocadero and. Sure. <laughs> and you like, you like meet them after the show. Yeah, you like, like actual. You, you like hang human out beings. with them. It's weird. Um, but I mean, I grew up with a lot of like, you know, that, that 90s, like, college rock, you know, indie rock. Uh, and then somewhere in the mid-90s, I discovered electronic music and that just, rather than switching like a lot of people do, be like, I don't like rock music anymore. I just, I just... Absorbed it. I just folded it in. Sure. I'm a huge Portishead fan, a uh, huge Massive Attack fan. Um, and then in college, I was in college radio and just when anyone who's even just had a, a shift on college radio knows that you just get inundated with just yep. so much awesome yep. music. Yep. And you got the old heads in the college radio station turning you on to like deep cut who tracks and yes. little feet and stuff like that. And then there's new stuff coming out all the time. And you go to shows and there's free records everywhere. Probably owe half my record collection to uh, <laughs> working for college Yeah, yeah that doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> no, no. What are CDs? What are yes, those? exactly. <laughs> Nick? pretty much exclusively Michael Jackson so I try and insert Michael Jackson into all of our songs like wherever I can all um, right he succeeded more times than I care to admit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm trying to think of I don't know what my influences are what do I, is one of one of Nick's amazing abilities uh, at least to me and we discovered this in the car on the way back from somewhere far away is that I'll be listening to the radio. We'll be listening to the radio, and a song will come on and I'll say like hey is this Phil Collins or Genesis oh, yeah. and Nick knows the answer instantly yeah, you know, I heard uh, um, uh, Billy wants you uh, something about my number. I don't even know the title, but I know if it's <laughs> yeah, Phil Collins. <laughs> what? Which one? Yeah, there's yes. something about, you know the song? Does anyone know yeah, I know. Yes, yeah, I, so, I, I, I played that at 98PXY. There you go. <laughs> right, yeah, and it was on a pop station. But, like, I, I didn't know the name of the song, but I could tell you if it was Phil Collins or Genesis. Okay, yes. uh, so, Tom. okay, the, now that we've veered off from influences, <laughs> thanks, Nick. Let's go to uh, song number two on the album. Uh, we're going to go with uh, Summer Feels Like Forever. Why don't we go to the song, and when we come back, we'll talk about it, okay? Uh, we are hanging out with The Way Home. Uh, this is your localnote.com. From their new album, it's called On So Thin a Line. This is uh, cut number three. It's Summer Feels Like Forever on your localnote.com. Summer
From the album on So Thin a Line, that is Summer Feels Like Forever, and we're talking with the group The Way Home. All right, guys, let's talk about that song. Who wrote that, and what is it about? That would also be me. All right, James. Um, it's uh, And you don't have to raise your hand, because we're on ra- <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's a audio. No, it's a side gag. It's okay. Okay. They They're going to love you. it. <laughs> um, it's uh, I was I was at one of my succession of, of bad jobs uh, that you have when you're trying to be a musician and survive um, and uh, it was I think the AC was broken and someone was talking and someone said oh I know summer feels like forever and I just the phrase kind of caught me and as I was walking around the city uh, sweating my face off because I do that um, <laughs> it sort of dropped back into my head uh with a melody and it sort of just became sort of about when you're when you're young and you're in love and it's summertime and you have all these long long days and nothing's going on and you're just walking yeah. around doing your thing um and then you kind of get older and your 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 summer now just feels like forever because you just want to die because it's so hot and you hate everything <laughs> um and you're maybe still in love or not but it doesn't matter anymore because you're just you're just going to cook in your in your clothes, um, come to any of our shows and you'll see why James does not like the heat. I don't care for the summertime. <laughs> it's, it's it's not my friend. I try to fight it, but it only makes it worse. Now, James, do you write most all of the songs? Is it a collaboration? Everybody? I sort of I bring in the bare bones. I bring in this week. Um, I bring in the uh, the lyrics, melody, usually the changes, and then we sort of build it. Uh, you know, I, I build the structure of the house, and then we all furnish the house. Got it. Make it some place that we want to live. Um, now take us through that a little bit. Uh, how is that a long process? Usually, does it does it change from song to song? It is a very long process. <laughs> Not Arduous. the actual the actual making of the song really isn't. I mean, it can be a longer process. In some songs, we think that they're done, and then you know. A year later, will someone will be like, "Oh, what if we play it like this?" And we're just like, "That, let's play it like that." And but so that change is made often, yeah. Uh, some and sometimes the change is only made once. Yeah. Maybe we'll just play it live that way once or twice, and sometimes we'll um, that'll be the way we play it uh, from from then on. the The long part of the process that at times it's very James is not unlike uh, not unlike a flood sometimes where it's just you'll one day he'll be like oh guys i demoed these five songs you'll send us five songs and then we'll have you know the next month they start to work on five songs and then nothing will happen for a while <laughs> and we're all sitting there just being like you know like trying to poke at him without like trying to like force the song i'm like you you got anything else just whatever you got half a song just send it this way we, we would like to because when you're a musician and when you play as many gigs as we do um you play the same songs, and so we're just yeah. like, just give us some new songs, not even for the people, just for us. Like, can we just now? How much <laughs> of the of the live performance affects writing new material? As far as finding out what the crowd is responding to in the in the material you already have, uh, not that much. Uh, I mean, probably it should be more realistically, but um, I'm a. I feel like I have to work with instinct as much as possible. Um, which sort of leads the writing, leads the arrangements, leads for me everything. Yeah. It's a matter of saying what feels right, what feels like it's going to work. Um, I've tried to like say, oh, you know what? I want to write a song about this, and it is terrible. Right. Universally. It has to come to you naturally. It has, like, and, and, that... I, and I can edit later and kind of make things cleaner, but initially the first thought just has to be there. Uh, and I can kind of force it by sitting with a piece of paper and a guitar, but that won't always – if it's – I'm going to write a song about politics. It's going to be a disaster <laughs> every time. And I've tried. Um, someone says, write a song about me. Yeah, can't do it. Not going to happen. <laughs> Sorry. I could do it, but you wouldn't like it. Yeah. And neither would I. Um, I think the crowd, I mean, like at least from playing live and just getting reactions from people will at times, maybe won't inform the actual, like won't inform the uh, the foundation of the house that James lays in, but will at times inform um, what we end up doing with it, not so much for people to be like, you know, hey, everyone likes this kind of music, so you should do kind of music, but we'll play things in a certain way. And if people are really responding to it, we're just like, you know, oh, well, that's a, when we did that thing in a song, people really like that. Let's, let's keep that, keep that in the bag of tricks. I think I said last night in rehearsal, we have like four tricks in the bag and we just keep <laughs> pulling them out in different orders. Hey, don't give our secrets away. I'm yeah. not going to tell you what the tricks are, but there are four, possibly five, uh, you, you got a bag. fifth one? Yeah. You, got, you got to tell me. You got to tell me. 
And also just recently, um, as we wrapped up kind of the, the summer tour and we've been, you know, kind of in the middle midst of our fall tour, um, we've been thinking about ways to kind of diver- diversify and, you know, change instruments. I mean, especially from, you know, my standpoint, it, a lot of times it depends on the space. I might be able to bring one or two keyboards, um, mm. possibly more. And then one of the other things we've been considering is stripping down to kind of a more acoustic sound. And, you know, as you already heard through some of the tracks, I mean, they're pretty much rock and we had to think about ways to translate the song. So a lot of times that forces us to reinvent songs and uh, sometimes good and sometimes bad, but that's what we have rehearsal for. Where did the motivation come from to start stripping down to a more acoustic based we were writing? We were playing a we were playing a couple of gigs where it just seemed more appropriate. Um and it's something we want to do. I we've had the discussion before it's like should we be an acoustic band, should we not be an acoustic band? And I always think to myself, this is like, well, who says that we can't be that we can't be both? We can be a band that does yeah. does it both ways. Um and I found with doing it that it's really kind of opened up like I said, we'll like I said earlier that we'll find different ways to play something uh, in rehearsals, particularly from the drumming and the percussive aspect. Uh, Nick has been laying in some really interesting changes on on how we would do things, and he'll do them and he'll kind of like smile, and be like, "Oh, but we won't do that." And all three of us in the room be like, "No, no we're no, totally we're doing keep that. going." Like <laughs> more we, of that. Yeah, right. we, that's trick number five. Yeah, tri- tri- right. trick number five. Let Mick let, let Nick mess with it. Um, just throw just things out of the wall and see what yeah. sticks. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, how else? You go make 10 mistakes in a row because the 11th time that you try it, you might be like, oh, that's brilliant. Or make 10 mistakes and then an amalgamation of those mistakes may be something awesome. And also we get to make fun of you for all the mistakes. No. It's, it's, <laughs> but, I'm going to add something to that. Um, another reason why we thought stripping down the music might uh, really help is uh, it allows our harmonies to kind of come through better and because sometimes you know the the rock music will overshadow the harmonies and harmonies are a big part of you know what we do right all you guys are providing vocals mm-hmm. exactly. at any given venue we have a different kinds of you know pa monitor not monitored setups and right. a lot of times we have to adjust our sound accordingly all right let's go to the third song on the podcast it's uh, the fifth track off your album it's called letter to jessica uh, real quick, James, what can you tell us about that? Well, it's actually a really good segue from the discussion of yeah. stripping down because it's actually it's a guitar, some percussion instruments, and right. voices. Um, the the hook I probably wrote what a decade ago. Oh gosh, we were like, like that. we were like eighteen um, or when I actually like was yeah. uh, miraculously engaged in, a, in an actual male correspondence with a, a lady whose name happened to be Jessica, okay. and I was perturbed one day that I hadn't received uh, her latest missive, and I wrote the hook, which I then probably forgot for eight or nine years we made a song out of it though I we did no we, we, we wrote it, it was terrible <laughs> I, I have no memory <laughs> um, of it one being of terrible forced, uh, right? it was yeah. one of those well I wrote it and it wasn't good and we played it anyway and we shouldn't have um, and then we stopped playing it and I forgot it and eight years went by and like the, the hook popped back in my head and I thought oh I wonder if I can work that this time and this is the result and here it is alright they are the way home this album is called On So Thin a Line and this is the fifth track on it it's called Letter to Jessica on yourlocalnote.com. Jessica, oh my darling, won't you write me a letter? Jessica, baby, maybe won't you send me a card? Cause you know I think I might make a bad week a little better. And a word from you could make the daily grind a bit less hard. The sun refused to shine just like the last few days this morning. Sally May took all my money right before my rent was due And you know it's lonely every day It's always work and it's never play And I think it's been too long since I last heard from you Jessica, oh my darling, won't you write me a letter? Jessica, baby, maybe won't you send me a card? Cause you know I think I'm not much make a bad week a little better And a word from you could make the daily grind a bit less hard Well I don't wanna be untrue Or make you think that I'm a fool Just to go home my darling won't you write me a letter Jessica, baby, maybe won't you send me a card? Cause you know I think I might might make the bad week a little better. And a word from you could make that daily grind a bit less hard.
Jessica, oh my darling, won't you write me a letter? Jessica, baby, maybe won't you send me a card? Cause you know I think I might, might make a bad week a little better And a word from you could make that daily grind a bit less hard That is Letter to Jessica. They are the way home, and this is yourlocalnote.com. Uh, you guys have been doing a ton of touring since this album came out. Um, talk about your live performance a little bit. Uh, what would people expect uh, when they go out to see you guys? It's definitely going to be loud. <laughs> Unless well, it's quiet. Unless it's quiet. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's four guys on stage, all of them singing, all of them playing, all of them trying very hard to get you to uh, to move in whatever way that you choose to move. <laughs> We've had people, I mean, we, we would never consider ourselves a dance band. Um, right. But, you know, we'll look out and there's people moving and I'm just like, all right, you know. Do you uh, do a lot of improvising uh, on stage with the songs? Um, not necessarily asking if you're a jam band, but... Uh, not a you ton. Know- we like to keep it loose, though. Okay. Um, we don't like to... But it's pretty close to what they're going to hear on the CD. Yeah, yeah. It's sections longer. I mean, not even so much sections longer. Like, you'll hear something on the CD, and depending on when you come to like how long in the future it sure. is before you come to see us, we might be playing that song a completely different way. You, know, you like to toy with it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You bring out the tricks. Oh, right. the, <laughs> the, the five tricks. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about where people can find your music. Well, our uh, main go-to place is www. Do we even need to say www no, anymore? anymore? Yes, no, <laughs> yeah, you don't have to. The HTTP. Okay, <laughs> the colon slash slash. <laughs> slash slash. <laughs> uh, so thewayhomemusic.com is okay. kind of the one-stop shopping. You can get our album there. You can see all of our tour dates, so every bit of information that you we want. We have a blog that we never update. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, yeah, James, James updates it. Um, Although, unless you are you like keeping meticulous track of what we play on every given show, then it's not terribly interesting yet. Um, uh, there, there, sorry to interrupt, but there are, all, there are also videos on the website uh, of our live performance. Very so if cool. you want to check it out before you go. Okay. Mm-hmm. See you there. And, of course, like every other band, we have a Facebook page, um, which is you know, facebook.com slash thewayhomemusic. And we also have a Twitter, uh, James on the road will uh, live tweet um, whatever you know, random things that occur. Are, are we following them? Oh, cool. Okay. It's true, they are. Yeah. So ready we, for some new my, state dances. <laughs> <laughs> my, Mike takes care of all that stuff. Yeah. It's always funny when we finish the tour uh, or when we finish like a certain like a date. I'll go into the Twitter to be like, all right, what did James write about? Because I don't look at it while he's doing right. it. I'm like, oh, we did that. Yeah, we did. <laughs> so it's kind of fun. It helps me kind of put, you know, re- repiece the things that have already happened. Nice. <laughs> I'm nice. like to drive, so I tweet. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Very so good. And we, you can find us on Twitter at The Way Home Music. That's okay, where they can find music. All right, let's talk about where you guys are going to be playing. So heading into November, uh, we're heading to New England first weekend. We're mm-hmm. doing Western New York in the middle of the month. Um, and then uh, the next local thing we're doing um, is going to be on the Saturday after Thanksgiving. Okay. Uh, there's a thing called the Wilmo Rock Circus. Uh, it's this the second year they've been doing it. It's in Wilmington, Delaware, at mm-hmm. the World Cafe Live at the Queen. Cool. Um, they are basically... There's a Prussian company called Gable Ventures who are phenomenal, uh, just great, great people to work with out of mm-hmm. Wilmington. They do the show where they're taking over the World Cafe for the day. There's Both stages are going to be lined up with bands oh, all nice. day, plus an acoustic stage somewhere that I'm not quite sure where it's going to be. <laughs> okay. Um, so like from, I think, noon till Whenever. some ungodly yeah. hour of the night, there's going to be bands 
all day, upstairs, downstairs. A um, bunch of Philly bands. We're going to be on that. I'm not even sure what time we're playing yet, but okay. it's going to be uh, their tastes are impeccable. They pick great bands. They put together great shows. So it's a show. And it's a show to catch. It's yeah. a show to catch. Saturday after Thanksgiving. So you've done your your Black Friday shopping. Right. You've had your turkey hangover. Now yeah. it's time to come <laughs> yeah. rock and roll for some ungodly number of hours. And it's all day Saturday. Yeah. All day Saturday. And it's going to be the, the the World Cafe. The the Queen at the Queen in Wilmington is a gorgeous gorgeous mm-hmm. space for people mm-hmm. who've seen the one in Philadelphia. That's a wonderful space. This place is also equal. Equally awesome. Very cool. All right. The Saturday after Thanksgiving. Wilmo Rock Circus. We got that. All right. Very good. All right, guys. We really appreciate you hanging out with us. And uh, let's go to the last song, To Reason Why. Who wrote it? What is it about? Uh, I wrote it, as is my <laughs> no. want. Um, and it's, uh, it's a lot about missing people and about the way that musicians and really just sort of creative people I think are a little bit broken in a way okay. um, that uh, there are a lot of reasons that I shouldn't be doing what I'm doing mm-hmm. right now. Uh, you know, I'm not getting any younger than I was and, um, you it know, is. trying to, well, yes, Nick's going backwards. That's a different problem altogether. You know, I I would like eventually to have the, the lovely middle class, you know, I'd like a house with a fence and 2.5 dogs or whatever, but <laughs> instead I'm spending my weekends in a van with these jokers. Okay, um, tweeting. 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 Yes. You know, and there's just, there's so many things that I should be doing that would make a lot more sense, but I just, I just can't. This is, this is just what I do. Okay. Um, and so... There's really none of that in the song, but <laughs> <laughs> it's, if it's, I were a better uh, if I were a better writer, it would all be in there. It would be all, but that influenced you to yeah, write that impetus. song. Yeah, it's also the song that we pulled that we managed to pull the uh, the title of the album out of, which then kind of dictated to us how the album was going to go. Okay, uh, I like the cover; it's very cool. Thanks, Nick. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what what uh, what made you decide to go with that on the cover? Oh, of the CD? well, actually. <laughs> oh, you know what? I was I was actually just going to tell a different story about me taking pictures out the window all the time. Um but uh yeah, but yeah, lit- the, so that that photo on the cover I literally took on our way home from uh, a show in New York, I think that's okay. uh Jersey. And so all the photos um on the album and related to the band are pic- photos that I took on the way home in the van. All right, very good. All right, thank you Nick for that. Commentary. (laughs) 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 Yes, the the, the pause before commentary was a nice... uh... All right, guys. Now, seriously, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thanks for having us. Uh, And as always, we'll have another podcast next week, a brand new one. But uh, check out these guys. And, of course, when they uh, they come back from their tour, they're going to tell us where they're going to be playing more often, and we'll have that up on our site. Uh, Again, it's yourlocalnote.com. Don't forget that we stream 24-7 our free apps. Uh, You can just look up uh, the apps in the App Store for Android and for smartphones under YLN. Remember, they're free. All right, we're going to close it out with To Reason Why from their album On So Thin a Line. This is The Way Home on yourlocalnote.com. And I don't remember what you told me late last night. But it seems to still be weighing heavy on your mind. Letters to your parents, letters to your friends. Letters